My Shire Farm. Uh, let me get situated here and then we will get started. Uh, I do have a couple of announcements for you to start off with and, uh, and then we will get into your questions. So, here we are. Uh, so welcome everybody, glad you're here. Uh, we try to do this every Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We do a live Q&A here with My Shire Farm. Uh, so ask your questions now about Caternix Quail. We will do our very best to help you on your adventure with Caternix Quail. And uh, we do a couple fun things here every Sunday. Uh, so if you're new, welcome. We're glad you're here. If you want to let us know where you're from, it's always interesting to see where all the quail people are at in the world. Uh, if you've hatched eggs from us in the past week and have not told me the hatch rate yet, uh, feel free to let me know. And we will write that down for our records. We are sitting at a 74% percent hatch rate on shipped eggs for the year uh, so I'm very excited about that as well uh, and then obviously ask your questions and uh, and we'll get you answered and we try to be kind to one another support one another so if you can support the channel by just hitting the like button I would greatly appreciate it and uh, and it helps the channel grow now uh, I am going to do announcements real quick and then we will get into the question and answer portion um, so first and foremost, hopefully you guys got to see uh, the videos this week. We did a video about the Govi. We also did a video about fly prevention that should help. Uh, so hopefully you can check those out. Uh, I did actually do uh, six videos yesterday. Uh, so we've got the Brentsia review uh, that is finished and loaded. Uh, we've got a couple of shorts that will be fun and uh, short and sweet. We've got a, is it too hot for quail? And uh, why are my quail going bald? I get that question asked quite a bit during the summer. Uh, so all those videos are done. Uh, I'm gonna be doing, hopefully I'll be doing a lot more on Tuesday or Wednesday uh, and, uh, and have a couple weeks behind our belt. But we've got a lot of videos coming your way, so make sure you subscribe to the channel. Uh, if you don't know what Quail University is, make sure you check that out. Um, you can just type in quailuniversity.com it is a online course that you can take. Uh, it's over eight hours of uh, material to watch. It's got handouts, spreadsheets. You can sign up for one-on-ones or uh, small meetings with the ins instructors, which is myself uh, or Jasmine Bass. Uh, Linda Easton Waller kind of put this whole thing together and uh, it's fantastic. We've had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people take this, complete the course, get their certificate, um, be quail masters, if you will, and we have a 100% review on it, uh, which is absolutely awesome. And uh, and then next is, if you have not heard about QuailCon, you really need to check that out. Time is running out to get the tickets. Uh, it is an event here. It's a two-day event here on our farm, uh, September 3rd and 4th, I do believe. All the information is on our website at myshirefarm.com. There's a tab that says QuailCon. Uh, you can check that out, see all the speakers, all the master classes, all the workshops. Uh, we're going to have tours, we're going to have, you know, cookout, we're going to have, uh, you know, vendors and all kinds of stuff. Bouncy houses for the kids, so make sure you check that out at myshirefarm.com. Uh, and as far as updates on the um, time frame for hatching eggs and live quail, uh, everything except for Jumbo Wilds are about a week out, a little less maybe. Uh, the Jumbo Wilds are about two weeks out, so we're getting caught up with those as well. Uh, and I will be posting a video this week announcing live quail sales, which a lot of people have been asking about. Uh, we put in, I don't even know, I think there's 6,000 plus eggs in the, in the lockdown right now. They'll be hatching Monday, Tuesday. Uh, and all of those, except for about 400 of them, are all going to be for sale. So we're going to start selling live quail next week, uh, and we'll be starting to put in eggs every week, I hope. Uh, so, uh, so live quail will be coming next week. Make sure you stay tuned to the channel uh, to know when that is going to be live. I think that is all the announcements for tonight. Next week will be our first Sunday of the month, which means we'll do the next 18 and under contest winner. Uh, if you don't know what that is, you can type into the YouTube search bar, 18 and under contest by My Shire Farm. Um, and uh, it's a great event. It helps the next generation get involved with self-sufficiency, learn entrepreneurship, learn responsibility, uh, and have a project of their own. So I hope you can check that out as well. And everyone under 18 is able to um, 
enter to win and we pick a winner every month. Uh, now that is all the announcements. Uh, so hit the like button, support the channel, and let's get in to the comments, shall we? Uh, Souls in the Bottle is in the house. Says, hey, everyone from Maine. Got my final count on the jumbo mix. Probably should get my trusty notebook out. Don't have that. Here we go. Uh, ordered 50 eggs, 40 hatch. That is wonderful to hear. 40 out of 50. Uh, Souls in a Bottle, if you're still on, if you could let me know what kind you ordered, I'd greatly appreciate it, but I love those numbers. It's a fantastic hatch rate. Uh, Mike is in the house from Central Kansas. Welcome. We're glad you're here. Um, Carrie's in the house from New York. Welcome. Joy is in the house. Ron from Arkansas from Stomp Creek Quail. Welcome. We're glad you're here. <clears throat> uh, Carrie says, I need, uh, I need coffee to you. Oh, okay. Uh, Ron says, so far I live in Phillips County, missing tornadoes so far, but in another line is on the way this evening. Yeah, we've got tornado war warnings here until 11 p.m., I think. I don't know. I looked at it briefly. Uh, Foster Farms is in the house. Welcome. Glad you're here. Um, does anyone who's on have a breeder's permit? If so, what should I look for in an inspection? Uh, I would assume a breeder's permit, you mean MPIP? Uh, if that's the case, it's the Natural Poultry Improvement Plan. That's what it's called. Uh, and there's a lot of us that are MPIP. Uh, they look at uh, cleanliness and safety of the, the animals, um, three-bay sink, uh, or maybe that's just the, the egg producer's license. That might just be the egg producer's license. Uh, and make sure your, your animals are happy, healthy, and safe, uh, really. Um, and then you'll just sign up on your local MPIP. Um, no one's talking to me. Uh, I keep my activity very clean, but it is all outside except for the incubator and grow out box. Flies are a challenge to manage, but I'm doing better this year. Keeping the fly numbers under control. There you go. Why it says I'm watching and shooting mice in the quail barn goes hand in hand. There you go. Uh, run, uh, no mice here, but have changed the configuration of a couple snakes. There you go. Uh, Kayaker81 says, hello everyone. Greetings from California. Welcome. We're glad you're here. Jesse Mills is in the house. Welcome. Uh, let's see. Kayaker says, Zach, I had 83 out of 110 pearl. I love those numbers as well. Congratulations. Uh, liking all of that. Uh, Carrie's in the house from Utah. Welcome. Gl glad you're here. Uh, and Kayaker, congratulations. That really is a great hat trade on, on the pearls. 80, 83 out of 110. That's that's really good. Uh, Lisa's in the house. Welcome. We're glad you're here. Farm Life is in the house. Welcome. S.O. Swanson from Mississippi is in the house. Welcome. Uh, Lauren Wallace is in the house from Montana and Buster from Oklahoma and uh, John Ruff from California. Welcome, everybody. We're glad you're all here. Christy's in the house from Massachusetts. Welcome. So and Tara is in the house from Gilroy, California. I hope everyone is doing well. I've been working a lot on peaches. We'll be processing quail tonight. I'll sleep at some point, I swear. There you go. That's how it goes on a homestead for sure. Ruby's in the house from Pennsylvania and Glenn from Oklahoma. Welcome both. Uh, living with Cambria is in the house. I just had my hatch. Got 18 out of them. That's that's great. Congratulations. If you did order for me, let me know how many you ordered and what kind. We'll write that down on your list. Uh, but good luck. Congratulations. Uh, Vase Place donated $10 to QuailCon. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Uh, Lisa's in the house from Arkansas. I am at day 17 of my first hatch of quail. Had issues with humidity but solved it after losing five babies, but now I have five wet babies in the incubator. What humidity is okay? Uh, for lockdown, you really want to be around 75%. Uh, Ron's in the house. Does anyone have experience with mountain quail? I do not. Uh, so when Tara says, I have quail in lockdown, should start hatching tomorrow. That is wonderful. Good luck. Uh, Beth is in the house. My girls just started laying eggs. One had some blood today. I think it has stopped, not, but not sure if it hasn't. What can I do to help? Nothing. Uh, if they just started laying, they're just working out the system. It's not, not a big deal at all. Uh, you'll probably do more harm than good if you try to do anything. So just let them be and let them uh, figure it out on their own. Uh, so no worries there. That's one of the hardest things about raising animals on a farm or caternix quail 
is uh, we always want to try to help them make it as easy as possible. And sometimes it's much, much better to just say, let it go. Now, if you're seeing a lot of prolapse and things like that, that's different. But if you're just seeing some blood on the eggs or whatever, and they just started laying, that's a normal process. Nothing to worry about at all. Uh, let's see. Farm Life says my quail just started laying. Congratulations. That's really exciting. Very cool. Uh, Carrie says we go into lockdown on Wednesday for 25 eggs. Well, good luck to you. I wish you all the best. Obviously, keep me posted. S.O. Swanson says correction quail count is September 2nd and 3rd. A mere 69 days away. There you go. It's not 3rd and 4th. It's 2nd and 3rd. But it is on the website. So uh, I should really remember those dates. I don't know why 3rd and 4th keeps getting stuck in my head. But thank you very much, S.O. Swanson. Um, no one's talking to me. Uh, yes is in the house. Says, hey, hello, Quail Pals from Perrysburg, Ohio. Thanks for the live again, Zach. Well, thanks for showing up. I appreciate it. Aaron is in the house. Says, hello, Quail friends from uh, hey, Zach. That's what he says. He's in Louisiana, just so everybody knows. Um, and uh, he'll be at QuailCon helping with the butcher experience and uh, helping out here. So I can't wait for that. Jesse Mills is in the house. Welcome. Uh, Homefield Honey and Produce is in the house. Welcome. Uh, Danielle's in the house from Northern Kentucky. Welcome. We're glad you're here. Uh, Ruby says, my roos are a month old now. If I buy some hens from you, can I add them to an older rooster? Uh, if they're just four weeks old, then that wouldn't be a big deal at all. Um, our hens won't be available. So they're hatching out this week. We won't ship them until they're two and a half, three weeks old, um, which would make your males about six, seven weeks old. Uh, and the hens would be three, so you'd really want to keep those hens separate until they're about six to seven weeks old. Um, so, I mean, you can, but you, they need to start laying eggs before you put them in with the males. Uh, Souls in the Bottle says, I ordered the Jumbo Mix. Wonderful. Thank you very much. I do have a story for you guys, a little rant. I'll do that at the very end. I'll make myself a note, so in case someone reminds me, I go, I don't remember what it was. Um... But it's kind of interesting. Uh, it's customer service and just how people treat people, things like that. Um, Dr. Connie's in the house. It's a sunny day in Florida. Welcome. We're glad you're here. Aaron is in the house. That's low from Indiana. Just put in 420 eggs in my fridge incubator. Doing a dry hatch and the humidity is 60%. Is that going to be an issue? Uh, you really want it to be lower than that. 60% um, they can start drowning in the egg. So you need to... Need to get that lowered. Uh, Shelly's in the house from South Carolina. Our Jumbo White Wings should be hatching this week. Wonderful. Good luck. And uh, I wish you all the best. And obviously, keep me posted. Uh, Ryu Cat is in the house. I'm starting some Celadon eggs today. And if it goes well, I'm looking forward to ordering some autumn, autumn ambers and golds. Wonderful. Well, good luck to you. Uh, I wish you all the best. PJ's Family Farm is in the house. Welcome. Uh, they'll be at QuailCon as well, as well as S.O. Swanson. Uh, and Ed Got Bait and Vase Place. There you go. Amy is in the house from Washington State. Welcome. Uh, Kevin's in the house from North Carolina. Welcome. Glad you're here. Andy in the house, uh, KC area of Kansas. Welcome. We're glad you're here. Uh, Living says 30 eggs. Wonderful. It was 18 out of 25 ordered. Uh, hate to bother you again, but living with Cambria, if you're still on, if you could let me know what kind you ordered, I would appreciate that as well. I'm sorry. Uh, but thank you for letting me know the information so far. Uh, Anime Gamer says, hi, can't stay, power's out, and there's a big storm, need to save power. There you go. Well, welcome. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, Foster Farms is in the house. We watched the fly control video. Very helpful. We're putting some into a wire cage so the flies can get to it, uh, but we'll keep the other animals out of it. There you go. Uh, Anime Gamer says these tornado warnings going around none here yet. Uh, Rebecca says, hey Zach, we had a successful hatch of white wings for my shire, 72%. Love hearing that, white wing. Uh, if you could let me know how many you ordered, I would greatly appreciate it if you're still on, Rebecca. Uh, but these numbers will work, but I can, if I can get how many you ordered, I can uh, be a little bit more specific on the numbers. But 72% is amazing, so congratulations. A lot of great hatch rates, everybody, so congratulations to all of you. Um, you, you guys are doing a great job. 
PJ's Family Farm says, hit that like button, people. Absolutely. Support the channel. Let's be kind to one another. Hit the like button, and uh, I would greatly appreciate it. Brian Lee Crow is in the house, says, hey, everyone. I know it says it is Brian, but it is Fran on his computer. LOL. There you go. Well, welcome. Uh, let's see. No one's talking to me. Uh, Ghosty, T Ghosty Ty is in the house. Hello, welcome. Um, uh, let's see, Aaron says, I have a couple extra jumbo roos from your eggs. If I put the rugs with my uh, roos, if I put the roos with my standard hens, will it help with the size of future hatches? Uh, the jumbo roos with the standard hens, yeah, it could help. Um, yes, that's how you would want to increase weight is put uh, jumbo males over uh, standard hens. Uh, Tony says, I have 18 hens and three roosters from my hatch. How should I divide them? Five weeks old today. Well, congratulations. Uh, I would do... Um, I just... I mean, if you've got the room... It, it needs to be three quail per square foot. Uh, but if you've got a big enough cage, you can put all of them in the same thing. That's uh, six... Uh, hens per male, which is fine. I recommend five, but six is fine. Not a big deal. Um, as long as they're three quail per square foot, they can all go together. If not, then you can divide them up by, you know, one and six or 12 and two or whatever. But I uh, keep it at a six to one ratio with what you have uh, and three quail per square foot. Um, Fran says they're still in the incubator hatching out some eggs. Good luck. Uh, Homefield Honey and Produce says, everyone, please give this a thumbs up. Well, thank you very much for your support. I appreciate it. Alex is in the house, says, hi, my quail are 45 days old, and there's no signs of them mating and no eggs. They are crowing, though. It's my first hatch. Uh, six weeks would be, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, you're right at that six-week mark. Uh, if they're crowing, they're mating, for sure. Uh, so I wouldn't worry about it too much. Um, uh, let's see. I lost my spot. I'm very sorry. Oh, here we go. Nuno says, Fairhaven, Massachusetts, 220 jumbo white, 181 hatch a couple weeks ago. Um, I need to write those numbers down. 181 out of 220 white. That's great. That is really great. Congratulations, everybody. Uh, three die on the first 24 hours and the rest doing just fine. Looking to order the jumbo mix on a, in a week or two. Congratulations. That's a fantastic hatch rate. Uh, very proud of you. You guys are doing a great job hatching eggs out. Uh, Shelly says, I have a very small covey that is about 12 weeks old and want to add six week old hens that are not yet laying. Is that okay? Uh, I would not. I would wait. Um, typically, you want to wait until they start laying eggs and then a week after uh, is the rule of thumb. Um, so if you don't have light on them, uh, then they probably won't start laying until they're eight or nine weeks old. Maybe even have light. You can add them when they're about seven and a half weeks old, uh, but they should start laying this week for you, which means I would recommend moving them next week. Uh, you want them to get the whole egg laying process out of their system before they go into the, the uh, adult cages, if you will. Uh, pastel collection living. Okay, thank you very much. You ordered the German pastels. Uh, thank you very much for letting me know. And congratulations. Hopefully you're really happy about it, and uh, I wish you all the best. Uh, yeah, you're doing great. Uh, the Good Life Off Grid Living is in the house. Hey, Pop, I'm off to bed soon, 12 a.m. here in England. Well, welcome. We're glad you're here. Thanks for stopping by, and uh, I wish you all the best. Uh, Rebecca says I ordered 25. Wonderful to hear. Thank you very much. Not bad at all. Thank you very much for letting me know, and uh, I wish you all the best. Uh, Jeannie says, found the perfect blend on feed, but it's mini pellets. Can't find it in crumbles. Quailer, soon to be 10 weeks. Will mini pellets be okay, or should I find a crumble? I would find a crumble if it was me, but mini pellets should be okay. Uh, I think they do better on the crumble. I think they digest it better on a crumble. 
um, but we've used mini pellets before and they haven't died, they just haven't produced as well. Uh, so it really depends on how important uh, you think this feet, like how perfect this feet is for you. Um, I, if it was me, I'd do a crumble. Uh, Good Life Off Grid says, good to see you. Well, glad you're here. Thank you. Uh, Christopher says, out of the eggs I ordered from you, 45 of the 60 pansy fees hatched. Uh, let's see, 45 out of 50 pansy fee. Wow, you guys are tearing it up. 50 out of the 50 pastels. Woo, like those numbers. Uh, hatch that I ordered from you. Also, I just received more from you and are in the incubator now. Well, you are tearing it up. Amazing hatch rates. Uh, that will get our numbers up real fast. Uh, so you guys are doing a fantastic job. Uh, I mean, literally every uh, hatch rate I've, I've gotten tonight has been extremely, extremely well good. So everybody on there is doing a great job. Uh, so congratulations to everybody. Uh, let's see. Diana Tuttle from Tut Farms is in the house. Love the fly video. Love all your info you share with us all. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Uh, and I've got a lot more videos coming your way. Uh, let's see. Farm Life says, Hey, Zach, how many quail can go into a 6x2 cage? Would you know? It's three quail per square foot, uh, which means 6x2 is 12. So 12 by 3 is 36. Uh, so you can have 36 quail in there. Uh, Ed got bait is says like subscribe and hit the notification bell absolutely support the channel I greatly appreciate it we do have a lot of really good videos coming your way so you'll definitely want to check that out uh, and Vase Place and Ed got bait are the moderators on my YouTube channel they're also admins and, and leaders in the community on Facebook as well uh, they're in blue because they uh, help me out a lot so I appreciate both of them Dr. County says my newest method of saving quail eggs is quail egg pasta Air dry two, three days, then shelf stable for more than a year. There you go. Very cool. Congratulations. That's very good. Um, Brian, Fran says, hey, Zach, again, this is Fran. Wanted to let you know that I did a pitch for the chamber, and because of the help with the spreadsheets and Quail U, was able to take home second place, $2,000. That is awesome. Congratulations. That's really, really cool. Very cool. Congratulations. Uh, so when Tara says, Zach, how is your uh, quick strike working for you since you made the video? Any tips for use? I found some local and put some in a couple bait stations caged to prevent cats, birds from getting them. Uh, it's going fantastic. I mean, I technically did the video yesterday. Uh, I did all the videos yesterday. I had, I wouldn't say a free day because I did a bunch of videos, but I did eight videos, seven. I did seven videos yesterday. Um... To try to get caught up because I'm, I'm hoping to be consistent and post twice a week uh, but the fly prevention I promised to do last Sunday like when we were on the live I said it was coming so I posted it this week uh, but like I said uh, we've got a bunch of good videos coming your way as well uh, the Brincia review I think that's gonna be really really interesting for a lot of people I've got three different nope two two different shorts that are just fun uh, that you guys can watch. I've got an auction video. I've got an Is It Too Hot for Quail video. I've got My Quail Are Going Bald, What Do I Do video. Uh, Maggie just had puppies, so we're selling the puppies now. That video is coming. Uh, and then Tuesday, my list is all about the BTAs, all about the pearls, how to handle quail, uh, the puppy video, all about the Jumbo Wilds, uh, live quail are ready to sell. Uh, the difference between jumbo options like jumbo whites, white wings, Egyptians, and, and wilds. Um, and then as soon as those are done this Tuesday, next week, I'm going to start on a quail for profit playlist uh, that will help more people become more successful with uh, quail for profit. But to answer your question, uh, my God, the quick strike is amazing. Uh, I put down a little bit more last night because I had cleaned the floor, so it was pretty much gone. Um, and so I put down some more last night and there's not that many flies in there because they're all dead, which is awesome. Um, but there was probably 150 on the ground. Uh, and I don't think one landed on me today at all. I was making foamers in there. I was feeding, I was watering, I was cleaning, I was doing this, that, and the other. And I don't think I came into contact with a live fly. Um, and it is like 92 degrees uh, today. It was real humid, real hot, 
and uh, I don't think that's ever happened. So really excited. No deaths in the quail. Um, so like there was no flies to fly up. I did watch some, so I, I planted some more and uh, kind of watched the flies. And it seems as though, I mean, I only watched it for maybe 10 minutes and then I had to get back to work. But they land on it and it's like this little crushed pellet uh, that you put down and then it kind of melts. Um, and so when they came in contact with it, they kind of stayed there for a few minutes and then they just, I never saw a fly fly away. You know what I mean? Like I didn't see them come and then like lick it, eat it, move it, whatever, and then fly away. Like anything that landed there never moved again. Uh, not that they were dead yet, but it was like they were real weak or lethargic or whatever. Um, which kind of sounds evil for me saying all that, but uh, I hate flies. Um, I don't hate flies. They're just, man, do they get annoying. So, uh, you know, I can kill a few. Uh, so it's going great. I love it. Souls in a Bottle says Chewy has a game bird crumble. There you go. The Good Life of Off-Gridding says, good, the good life off -grid Living says, great job, everyone. Absolutely. Uh, about the hatch rates. Uh, Tut Farm says, I was, a f I was at Farmer's Market yesterday and our area newspaper came by and wants to do a story and my of my farm and the quail. Don't know when, but exciting to get the word out about the quail farm. That's awesome, congratulations. That is very exciting. Very cool. Um, Alex Baker's in the house. Are we going to be able to get live Jumbo Wild from you anytime soon? Uh, I actually had six sets on the website uh, last week, sold them this week. Uh, and then, uh, the Jumbo Wilds, no. Uh, the rest of the jum Jumbo Egyptians and Jumbo White Wings uh, will have available when these live birds come out. Um, let's see. I lost my spot again. Uh, Nabiki's in the house. I'm late. I finally have a computer and am settled in my new house. Well, welcome. We're glad you're here. I hope that you're uh, doing well in the new property and uh, big things coming. I know that you were talking about all kinds of really fun projects, uh, so I wish you all the best. Uh, Bob Cole says, howdy. One of my three-week-old chicks has a small BB on the top of her beak. Uh, what is it and should I be concerned? Otherwise, nice size and normal behavior. Uh, I wouldn't worry about it at all. I mean, it could be a deformity. It could be a scab. It could be, yeah, I mean, Either way, I mean, as long as it's not growing, I wouldn't worry about it at all. Um, I wouldn't worry about it. Uh, unless you see more of them like that, but if it's only the one, I wouldn't worry about it. And most likely it just got hurt. Uh, Nishra Rama is in the house from sunny Arizona. Welcome, we're glad you're here. Yes, says uh, quiche for breakfast and roasted quail for dinner today. Self-sufficiency is the bomb. Raise quail, hit the like button. There you go. I love the support and the enthusiasm. Uh, welcome, we're glad you're here. Uh, I lost my... So in terror, says I ordered fly predators and I'm trying to knock back the adults with the quick strike while I wait for the fly predators to get here. There are parasites of fly larvae. There you go. David Lister says we ordered quick strike after the video. We have used a lot of fly, fly strips in the past. If you have Stock and fly strips now may be the time to sell. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yep. Absolutely. Kimberly says, what incubators do most people use? Um, I'm, I'm doing a uh, incubator review posted this week about the Brencia. Um, I'm going to highly, highly recommend the Brencias. Uh, they have a lot of different options, anywhere from like 106 bucks to 1200 bucks, and anywhere in between. Um, that by far was the easiest incubator I've ever used in my life. Great hatch rate. I can't give all the details away. Uh, otherwise, you won't watch the video and I worked really hard on that video. Uh, but I really like the Brencia uh, and I'm really pleasant, pleasantly surprised with the uh, Little Giant as well. So those would be two that I would recommend to look at. Um, William Burris is in the house from Michigan. Welcome. We're glad you're here. Souls in a Bottle says, is anyone working on a Jumbo Gold? I kind of want to see if I can develop a Jumbo Gold because they are so pretty. Uh, it will take you a very long time. Not that it's not doable. It is doable. Um, but 
golds after about two years will lose their, or two generations will lose their weight. If you are breeding, then you're literally doing multiple generations a year, which means you won't be consistent and then you won't be able to sell them as golds. Uh, same with the Tibetans. They just don't really keep the weight on. Uh, so it would be a very long project. Not that it's not doable, uh, but just going into it, know that it is a very long uh, project. We did get our jumbo, or we did get our golds and our Tibetans to jumbo size years and years ago. Uh, and in the first generation, their production dropped off dramatically because they just weren't meant to be jumbo size. And then the second generation, they started laying really well and we were like, what the heck? And then we weighed them and we were like, oh... Well, that's not good. They lost the jumbo weight. Uh, so uh, I called a couple of breeders way back in the day that were kind of retiring when I came into the business. Uh, so we're talking, you know, that was 10 years ago and they'd been in the business for 30 or 40. So we're talking, you know, 50 years experience there. And, uh, and they said the same thing. They said it just wasn't worth it. Uh, but I mean, you know, if that's your, if that's the project you want to work on, work on, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Just know all the facts about it. <clears throat> um, William Burris is now says Quail Barn, but I don't know exactly what you're talking about. I'm sorry. Uh, if you can remind me, I'd appreciate it. So when Tara says, has Brentsy contacted you yet about numbers? No, they have not. But I actually haven't posted the video yet either. So uh, I'll probably post the video and then uh, put in my calendar to contact them in about a month. Um, because they gave us a, a coupon code uh, that's 10% off on their website, brencia.com, if you use the code MYSHIRE, which is cool, which is cool. They were kind enough to do that and not just ignore my email. Uh, Nikki James is in the house, says, hey everybody, hot today, not trying to catch up, now trying to catch up on chores, there you go. Uh, welcome, can't wait for you guys to be here at QuailCon as well. Uh, Emma Ball is in the house, welcome, we're glad you're here. Uh, Farmless says, I'm going to buy some more eggs in a couple of weeks so I can grow my breeder flock. Well, good luck to you. We'll be ready for you. And uh, like I said, all of our eggs are about a week out except for the wilds, which are two weeks out, which is, I feel, reasonable. Uh, and then starting this week, which I will be posting a video on, we will start up selling live quail, which I'm very excited about. Uh, Souls and Bottles says, I use the Barado 49. There you go. I have not had any experience with that. Uh, Nabiki says, I need to order more Fab Fee eggs. My neighbor's dog killed or chased all of our grow outs yesterday. Oh, that is a bummer. I hate to hear that. Sorry to hear that. Danielle says, I had, uh, I had good results with my Nurture Right 360 despite lots of user error early on. There you go. Uh, the Nurture Right 360 did fine. Um, I think that you have to kind of, I, I think it's a good practice to insulate it. Uh, I think it's a good practice to, to monitor it and this, that, and the other, which is not a big deal. It doesn't take that much time. Um, and and I, I like it still, and it was fine. Um, but I'm telling you, like, I literally set the eggs in the incubator uh, of this Brincia, went on vacation, came back a week later, didn't even touch it until that next Friday, and then candled, put water in it, and then a day and a half later, filled it up with water again. And that's all I did. Uh, and then I took the chicks out uh, when they were 24 hours old. And then 24 hours later, I took the rest of the chicks out. It was a massive hatch, so I didn't really worry about the rest. Unplugged it. And then I literally, uh, I had blue paper towels in there, which we'll show you in the video. I just grabbed all of those with all the eggshells in it, threw it in the trash, uh, and then put it under the sink, washed it, and then I sprayed it with Listerine and put it upside down on the sink and let it just air dry and drip out. And it's ready for another hatch. So it's, I was really impressed with not doing anything to it. Um, that's my kind of incubator. <laughs> uh, let's see, the good life is, the good life off-grid living says, I'm trying to look for Egyptian giants in the UK. Do you know if they are called something else in the UK? I am not sure. Um, I would assume it has to be there, but I don't know if anybody that has the Rue gene there. 
But I, I could be, I mean, it's not like I, I know that area very well either. Um, but I don't remember seeing anybody that has the Rue gene. I would assume somebody has to be there. Um, most likely in the UK, they're probably called Sex Link Brown, maybe. It's hard to say, but you can look that up too. Uh, Souls and Bottles says, fair, fair on the gold info. Not a problem. Glad I could give you some insight there. Uh, Lisa says, Nurture 360 is what I'm using. I have it in my garage with my window AC near. Uh, would I get a better hatch rate in the house? I think you would. Um, it seems as though that that does need more insulation than most. Uh, so I would move it to the house and still insulate it with a towel or a blanket. And I think you'll get better results, yes. Uh, Danielle says, yes, I had my nurture... Nope. Yeah, I had my nurture right wrapped in a towel. There you go. Uh, Johnny says, can you put two males in with 10 females in the same breeder cage? Yep, that's not a problem at all. As long as it's five hens to every one male and three quail per square foot, you can put as many as you want in there. So if you can fit 50 and 10 or whatever the numbers are, then do it to it. Uh, let's see. The Good Life says, oh, not talking to me. No one's talking to me anymore. Uh, so I will go over a couple of comments real quick. Uh, or or, or uh, what's the word I want to use? announcements and then uh, if anybody has any other questions comments or anything they want to say feel free to comment below before we end this one uh, this one is I guess going to be a, a short live but that's okay uh, we had some good questions some good feedback and, and great hatch rates uh, I've got a lot of good videos coming for you in the next few weeks they are all done they're all loaded uh, onto YouTube uh, so we're doing a Brincy review uh, a quail University an auction uh, quail con uh, is it too hot for my quail? My quail are going bald. What do I do? A lot of great information on there. There's one more that I did that I don't think I wrote down. I just thought of the top of my head. And for the life of me, I can't remember what that video is now. But it is posted, so there you go. Uh, make sure you check out QuailCon on our website, myshirefarm.com. It's an event we're having here September 2nd and 3rd. Thank you very much, S.O. Swanson. Uh, it's a two-day event. We're going to have a ton of special speakers, a ton of master classes, tours, a bunch of workshops, uh, and just a great gathering of people that are like-minded, and it's fantastic. Um, oh, and I've got my rant. You're right. Thank you, whoever just said that, Vay's Place. Uh, I've got my rant that I'll tell you in just a minute. Uh, let me get through the rest of these comments, and then we'll get going. Uh, Ultra Thub, uh, Ultra Thub, uh, says, hey, dude, I got my Jumbo Egyptians a few weeks ago. I, a lot of them have hatched now, right now. Out of 29, I have 19 total hatched as of day 19. Might be another straggler. Oh my God, they are unbelievably cute. That is awesome to hear. Congratulations. Uh, you're already doing great on the hatch. What I would recommend is increase your humidity another 5 to 7% for about 48 hours and then call the, uh, the hatch quits. And then obviously keep me posted on the hatch rate. Uh, but you're doing great so far. You're doing fantastic. So even if you don't gain more, you're doing awesome. Uh, Emma Ball says, thank you for inspiration and education you have given me over the years. I have been wanting to breed quail for years. And this year I got my first batch of hashing eggs. Thank you, Zach. You're great. Well, wonderful. Uh, congratulations. Good luck. And uh, I wish you all the best. And if you have any questions, I'm here every Sunday. Uh, S.O. Swanson says, we're not ending without the uh, CS rant. Yep, it's coming. I forgot. Thank you. Uh, Terry says, Aloha from the Big Island. Glad to hear about the Brentia. Just got mine in. Once my quail room is ready, HOA doesn't allow so making soundproof and cages are made. We'll be ordering eggs. Wonder. Uh, I cannot ship to Hawaii. Sorry. Uh, but I wish you all the best. I think you're going to do great. But Hawaii has the strictest import. And even though you are part of the U.S., it's still an import. And so we can't ship there. Uh, they're really annoying, like super, super annoying. Uh, so I'm very sorry. Uh, Shelly says, don't forget the rant. It's coming. I've got, I've, I've marked it, putting my finger on it until I'm done with the comments. Dr. County says, uh, love the fly control video. I grew up on a da dairy farm. My mom often put out yellow fly bait. I'm thinking golden marlin, but can't find it now. Uh, it's still a bit weird to me that fly bait is now blue. There you go. David Lister says, our little giant does great until we... 
Remove the egg turner. Even with a quick removal, it is the problem to get back up to temp. I do wrap it, but it still takes hours to get back in tips. Um, I mean, it's possible that your heater is probably going out or overworking. Uh, you might want to call the company of the little giant uh, and see if they'll send you a new uh, heat motor. Uh, and that, that might do the trick. Um, Another option that you can do is when you do take your lid off, make sure you're putting it on a solid surface. So if you're just like taking it off and putting it on the ground real quick, like fake, you know, just leaning up against a table or something, then that heat's just going to go, go, go. If you put it on a table, then that heat is going to heat up that surface just real quick. It's not going to overly work. You put it back on and you're good to go. That might help you a little bit as well. Uh, is it fine to use shavings in your quail cage? Yep, absolutely. Deep metal, deep litter method is completely fine. Um, uh, let's see. I have it chilling at 77%. The nurture right is struggling to go any higher without throwing temp up too much. One just hatched a few minutes ago. Um, yeah, I would actually put um, like a little Tupperware bowl in there with water and like a washcloth or a sponge or something. Put that in there. Uh, and the humidity is going to be more important than anything else. So even if the temp spikes, it's not too big of a deal. Uh, and you're already down on day 19. So that would be my recommendation. Um, PJ's Family Farm says, I finally just ordered my Quail Con shirts. There you go. Uh, the Good Life says, I'm going to sleep now. Thank you for the video night, everyone. Absolutely. Thanks for stopping by. Gerald says, I'm going to put a fan in the barn with the quail. Will they stop laying for a while or really continue? Yeah, they'll do fine. A fan's not going to affect them at all. I mean, unless it's like right in their face and they're like, yeah, but they'll do fine. Ron says, I've never had problems with cedar shavings, but you never know. There you go. Uh, yeah, you're not supposed to do cedar shavings with, uh, with quail or chickens. Uh, why it says, do your eggs come in foam shippers? Yes, absolutely they do. False Farm says, shipping to why I tried to do that and got a very nice but very scary letter from the powers that be over there, scared straight, lol. Yeah, they send, yeah. So people order on the website and then we just ship them and we ship literally hundreds and hundreds of boxes a week so we don't even look at the, the states very often. And so probably once a month they'll send us this nasty but yet polite email like hey i hate you and don't ever ship eggs here again it's like oh right sorry so yeah uh dr Connelly says i'm trying tsc pine pellets in the poo tray still evaluating there you go uh emma says where is the best place to educate myself on the colors and genetics of quails that guy i've watched your playlist so far but i'm struggling to identify some patterns and colors uh, you can always jump on the website and look at the pictures and match those up. I bought a mixed batch from a breeder who doesn't know what they've given me either. Uh, yeah, you could do that. You could post on one of the Facebook groups pictures and people can let you know what they are as well. Uh, that would be two options. There's not a really great source for uh, color identification. Uh, False Farm says, can you use the cedar shavings in the poop trays? Yes, absolutely. That's not a problem at all. Uh, Ultra says, I'll try that. Thank you. I'll update you next Sunday, unless you'd rather me email you. Whichever one you want to do, uh, doesn't matter to me at all. Um, and I appreciate you getting me the numbers. Uh, let's see. Farm Life says, do you ship to Canada? I do not, unfortunately. No international shipping. Uh, but I do have a phone call out and, uh, I don't know. It sounded like they were like, yeah, I don't care. And I'm like, well, you've cared for the past six years, so... And they're like, yeah, if you want to send them. I'm like, so I got to do a little bit more research. I don't know if I just talked to a person that just didn't know what they were talking about or what, but uh, it sounds like I might be getting somewhere. Uh, Full Astern says, hey, Zach just got to log in. Thanks so much for your help this week. We have our eggs in the new incubator and excited. You guys are amazing, wonderful. I wish you all the best. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask, but I'm sure you're going to do great. Ted says, what strainer do you recommend for capturing spilled feed? Um, I mean, what we do is we have, we just, we made a little plate that goes on top of our feeders and then put quarter inch wire on top of that and then literally scoop it out of the poop trays or off the floor or whatever and then just dump it in there and all the big poop and stuff just stay out 
and the feed goes in because it's a crumble, and so that's what we do. Uh, Alex says, how do you get rid of smell? Uh, clean the poop trays every day, uh, pressure wash every week, uh, keep the floors clean, and uh, plenty of ventilation. Uh, Terry says, guests will be getting eggs or chicks off of Craigslist here in Big Island. Sorry, I just want to let you know in advance so you weren't trying to waste your time on that. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, you can use pine sole in the, in, the, in the poop trays. You can also put bedding down. Uh, that'll help with the smell as well. Um, that is all the comments for tonight, everybody. So I do, I'm not forgetting, I do have uh, a rant that I'm going to give you real quick. Uh, we do have some really good videos coming your way, so make sure you subscribe. Make sure you check out QuailCon, and make sure you check out Quail University. So, Jenna, let me back up. Maggie, which is our Great Dane, she was pregnant. She started giving birth at 3 o'clock in the morning, I don't know, Wednesday? I don't know what day it was. Everything runs together. Well, they're in my bedroom, so that's super annoying. But Jenna was up with her all night, and I was in and out of sleep because I had to work the next morning, obviously. So Maggie was in labor from 3 a.m. until uh, midnight, I think. Um, there was one stuck, um, and at midnight we started freaking out, and of course it's midnight. Uh, so me and Jenna did some stuff that I'd rather not do again, but we got the puppy out. And, uh, and Maggie's doing fine. Um, and so anyways, Jenna was with the dog from literally 3 a.m. until midnight, which is, if you do the math, like 21 hours, right? So Maggie's doing fine with the puppies. They're all together. She had 11 of them. She's keeping them all together. They're taking turns eating. Not a big deal. They're noisy, but they're, they don't need a lot of attention like the last litter. The last litter Maggie had, she had like 14 or 15 puppies, and we had to rotate every two hours, and that was annoying. This time we're not doing that, a lot easier. Okay, so the next day, Jenna's super tired, still taking care of the puppies. I said, I'll do your emails. And that should show how much I love her because I hate emails more than anything. I don't mind texts. I just, I don't like emails. I don't know why, I, I just don't like them. And I respond to emails like it's a text. Like I just, I just, you know? So anyways, I work, get done in the barn, I print the labels, I get everything ready, I go to the post office, I do my phone orders, emails, numbers, I do all my stuff. It's about eight o'clock at night, I've been up since about five, and so I start on her emails. Well, she happens to have 176 emails. That's super annoying. And there was such a massive difference between people emailing Jenna and people emailing me. Like, the way they talk or, or communicate in the email is just mind-blowing to me. Um, so, you know, I get a lot of good hatch rates and, and things like that. And we get bad hatch rates too. I mean, it is what it is. It, it's a lot of different factors. Um, and so usually when I get emails, it's either really good e uh, hatch rate, you know, 55%, you know, wish I could have done better, but I'll learn, whatever. I'll get a few that are like, hey, I didn't quite hit it. Okay, you know, this is the information I need for you to get the 50% hatch rate, blah, blah. And it's not a big deal, you know? And usually they're like, well, what tips do you got? And then I'll send them my videos on incubator tips. Not a big deal at all. I don't think I've had a hateful bad hatch email in maybe all year. Like, it, it's been a long time. And Jenna has two that are just the nastiest emails that I have read in I don't know how long. And so I tell Jenna about it, and Jenna goes, well, you should have really seen the email that I got last week. This guy was really mean. And so I said, well, where is it? She goes, no, it's not a big deal. I took care of it. And I said, I'd like to read it. And she goes, I don't want you to. I said, all right. So anyways, she was like, are you sure you're going to do my emails? And I said, yeah. She goes, are you going to be mean? And I said, depends if they're mean. I don't know. And she goes, okay, well, if you are, then just say that it's from you and not from me. And I said, all right, no problem. And so this lady, there was two hateful ones. The one emailed, and it was kind of hateful, you know. I mean, there was no information. It was, 
uh, your eggs suck, I didn't get a 50% hat trick, give me my money. That was the email. Like, no name, no order number, no, hey, blah, 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 thanks for the guarantee, I'm, I'm gonna cash it in, like whatever, it was, that was the email. So I emailed back with my name, and I was pretty not as nice as I normally am on emails. And uh, and when they responded back, they responded before I got done with like the whole 120 emails. Uh, and they were much nicer. So were they much nicer because I responded or were they much nicer because I said that it was me? I don't know. This other lady was very hateful. I did not like the email at all. And I forgot, this was my fault. I forgot to put my name. So I responded and just sent it. Because on my emails, I don't send my name. Like, it's from my email. You know who you're talking to. So I didn't send it. I forgot. So, she was very hateful. I don't like people being mean to my wife. It bothers me a lot. And so I try to be professional as much as possible. But then, when they're mean to my wife, then I go, I don't want your business. And I don't care anything about you. So, see ya. I didn't put my name. So the next day, Jenna's feeling better. She got some sleep. She starts doing emails. She calls me. I'm in the quail barn. And she is ripping me a new one. I was like, what are you talking about? And she goes, I read your reply. And I said, Ooh. <laughs> I didn't think you were supposed to do that. She goes, yeah, because they responded. And they're not backing down. And I said, all right. I mean, just forward it to me and I'll email it from my email. And she goes, I mean, sometimes it's better just to leave it alone. And I said, no, I, if they're gonna act like that, we don't want them as a customer, I don't care. So she goes, okay, fine. So anyways, the moral of this story is make sure that you treat men and women equally. <laughs> so just because you're talking to a man doesn't mean that you need to be a little bit nicer or whatever. And just because you're talking to a female doesn't mean that you can just roll all over. Um, that really bothered me a lot because there was a lot of emails and all of them were just like really harsh, you know? Like they weren't mean, but they weren't, you know, like I get a lot of emails and it's first like a backstory or hey, or, you know, a lot of these were just, uh, I need you to fix this. When do my eggs go out? When? And it's just like, Let's be kind to one another. Let's just let's just be nice to one another. So anyways, that was really eye-opening for me on how men and women are treated just in that short little sample of time. And uh, that really upsets me. So anyways, um, now we have another person on our blacklist, which means if they try to order on the website, they cannot order. It will say they are not eligible. If they try to order on eBay, they will not be able to. They are blocked from the auction group. Um, and so if you are trying to sell, there are going to be some times where you just need to cut a customer off. If they're gonna be more hassle than anything else, if they're not gonna to try to work through problems and just want free, 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 um, you know, according to them, they got 30 Jumbo Wild hatching eggs, 0% hatched because 0% developed. They were in the mail for three days and uh, it's all because we shipped them wrong. And so she read our 50% guarantee policy and she disagrees with it. So she wants her full money back plus extra eggs or she's going to blast us on Facebook. And I said, hold my beer. And so I just told her I didn't give a flying crap what she was gonna do and that I would honor our policy on our website because that's what we should do. Uh, but she's no longer going to get egg, eggs anywhere. She's not going to get eggs from us ever again. And she said, well, I'm going to get on your website and order right now. And I said, no, you're not. And so, um, anyways, you know, sometimes you got to let customers go. Uh, that was a long story, but it just, I mean, if you really think about it, like really, if, if you're a guy, like really start listening to how other people talk to women when they don't think a guy is around. And, uh, I don't know. I mean, out of 127 emails compared to my 30, 40 a day, I mean, I felt like that was a good comparison. But uh, anyways, that made me really mad. And again, this is just a rant, so you don't have to listen to me at all. You can get off if you want. But why wouldn't women be nice to women? Like, shouldn't you guys stick together? You know what I mean? Like, 
I, I just don't I, don't, I don't understand. Like, I, I just don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. Let's just be kind to one another. Doesn't matter if you're anything. I don't get it. I don't like it. Uh, let's see. All right, I'm going to get through these comments and then we'll get you out of here. Uh, that was my rant for the week. But man, that made me mad. Uh, full ass, oh, where'd you go? Uh, let's try to call. I don't think they got the hint. Uh, Lisa says, thanks for the advice, Zach. Not a problem. Good luck. Fool says, uh, Fool Astern says, have a blessed evening and wish the best for Maggie. Thank you very much. Timber Ridge Quail Farm says, hi. I have a week old quail and I have cleaned their cage twice a day, but they still got the poop balls on their toes. Any advice? Um, yeah, you probably need to take whatever flooring you have down. Uh, you need to take that away from their, also I use the blue paper towels. Okay, great. So whatever their water system is, it's either leaking or they're spilling it over. Um, what happens is they, wherever your food is, they'll bring it over to the water source and then they'll poop right there and then they stand in it and it's wet and then it hardens. So like put your water on like a piece of block or something so it's off the ground. Uh, that'll help you a lot. Uh, or you can put some bedding down around the water. That will help it a lot as well. Uh, Feather Connection says, hey, I'm late, but I'm here. I had to get two customers their hens real quick. Awesome. Congratulations. Uh, thanks for stopping by. John says, hello from Mobile, Alabama. So I just watched, I just hatched my own eggs for my birds, 24 out of 35 using the 3060. Thanks for all the information I've received from your channel. Love you guys. Stay blessed. That is wonderful. Congratulations. And uh, you're killing it. Congratulations. That's awesome. And they were jumbos. Really cool. Teresa says, I have a great report. Ordered 50 mixed standard eggs and 45 hatched out. Amazing hatch rates, everybody, at night. You guys did a fantastic job. Which, again, uh, here's another like little rant. Um, if you get a zero development out of 30 eggs, and then I get numbers like 40 out of 50, 83 out of 110, 18 out of 25, 72%, 8, 181 out of 220, 17 out of 25, 45 out of 50, 50 out of 50, 45 out of 50 order. Those were just really re given. I'll say given because I can't think of the word I want to say. Uh, those numbers were given to me just on this live tonight in the past hour. Those are all fantastic hatch rates. Now, does that mean we can't make mistakes? Does that mean the shipping process won't affect up a box? Does that mean that the post office won't treat one like a volleyball or a soccer ball? Or does that mean, you know, whatever? Then no. I mean, there can things can happen to any box, right? But the majority of the time, you're going to get a great hat trick. And if you don't, well, then we'll give you, you know, we, we take care of you. We got the 50% guarantee. So when you get a 0% hat rate and you know what you're doing and you did everything right and you don't want to listen to us and you want a full refund and you want more eggs, you're not a customer that I want. Like, I go deal with someone else. You know what I mean? Uh, so just keep that in mind for those of you that are selling because when we started, we tried to make every customer happy and then we would get those customers every once in a while like that. And we would just go above and beyond and start losing money. Oh, sure, you know what? We'll send you free eggs and we'll give you 50%, but we can't give you the 100, but we'll give you 50, but we'll send you free eggs too. And we'll do this and we'll do that. And then eventually I just said, whoa, whoa, whoa. We don't have time for that. And this is one out of every 100. This is one out of every 200. This is one out of every 500. And so if they're going to act like that, you know, and it's different if you're very... Uh, respectful and humble and kind and, and willing to communicate, we'll do whatever you want. Like, we will work with you as much as we can. You know what I mean? Or we will explain things or we'll give you tips or we'll, you know, we'll do whatever it takes. Um, but when you're going to act like that, why would we want to help? So, now, okay, that was the end of my rant. Um, let's see. Uh, Farm Life says, sometimes I clean mine three times a day and it still happens. Timber Ridge Quail Farm. There you go. John says, could be mixed. LOL. I have a few uh, tux roos. There you go. Aaron says, Zach, your customer service is starting to be like mine with rude people. There you go. Gutro's Family Farm says, I love uh, that you back Jenna like that. People brush me off, but I but will listen to what Aaron says and I don't even understand that thinking. Yeah, I don't 
I don't get it at all. It doesn't make sense to me. And hey, hey, I, I got a big secret for everybody out there. Um, Jenna's the boss. So, you know, I can throw my weight around and I can say this and I can say that. And she usually just lets me do what I want. But every once in a while, she'll come down and go, hey, I heard that you were thinking about that. And I go, yeah. And you, she, she'll go, you're not. And I go, nope, sure wasn't. And then she'll just leave. And I'll go, wasn't thinking that at all. So, I mean, what she says goes. So, I mean, if you're going to be nice to anybody, it probably should be the boss. I'm just the worker. Uh, let's see. Boss Farm says, so you're telling us that you're telling us you did a Zach attack. LOL. Yes. A man for a husband. Don't pick up my, uh, don't pick on my wife. Grr, said Zach. Good on you, Zach. Yeah, I, I don't like that at all. I, I don't like people treating anybody, any sex or color or anything. If you're not going to treat everybody equal, then you don't need to be around me. Uh, Ban Garcia 3 says, question, I'm in the fifth week of raising chicks. Can I switch to regular feed and do I have to grind layer feed? Do not grind any feed uh, and they need to be on a starter grower until at least eight weeks old. Uh, good question. Uh, John says, he said, hold my beer. Yeah, I actually was drinking a beer when I was doing your emails too, which probably isn't the greatest idea, and I don't do that for my emails. So, but, I mean, it was one beer. It wasn't a big deal. Uh, get them, Zach. There you go. Uh, Lisa says, so five babies hatched, two more pipping. So excited. After losing five to 30 to user error, I'm very happy. That's wonderful. Uh, it sounds like you're still going to do great, so I wish you all the best. Uh, Joyce says, well done, Zach. I applaud your response. Thank you. Wyatt says, what's the auction group? That is coming this week. It's a Facebook group that I do auctions on. It has been inactive for over a year because I haven't had any eggs. Uh, we have a cage dedicated just to the auctions. I'll be posting that this week with the link to it. Uh, but if you want to check it out early, it's called the My Shire Farm Quail Egg Auctions. Uh, I'll be the only one posting in there. And, uh, and we'll be doing auctions every Friday and Saturday. Uh, let's see. Uh, Delaney says, being a dog warden female, I get this all the time from people until they get face to face with me. There you go. And Biggie says, trying to be woman, work, woman working in IT, I had to prove myself every time I met a new customer. I don't get it. Like, I don't, I don't get the bigotry. Like, I just, men are idiots. I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. And I'm only smart because my wife tells me what to do. And that's all men, because I know a lot, a lot of men, and we're all dumb. And if we all get together, we're like ultra dumb, we're super dumb. And then we go back home to our wives, and then we start getting smart again. So it's like, hey, how about, how about we treat them with, you know, I don't know, respect. Let's, let's try that. Let's see if that goes well. It just amazes me that that's just it amazes me. Um, and it amazes me. Uh, Ryu Cat says, Karens are a completely different thing. Yep, absolutely. So and Dare says, Def definitely is a difference. I see it all the time as a female on construction sites. One of my male co-workers had no clue until he was training a new female biologist on site. Totally unfair. Yeah, it's just stupid. Just stupid. And they're, that's what they are. They're just ignorant. It's ignorant people. Uh, that are unhappy with their own lives. Uh, and this this lady, she just obviously doesn't like her life at all. Uh, Top Farm says, you were a great and honest businessman. Thank you. Jesse Mill says, when I used to work at an auto parts store, the assistant manager was a woman. Uh, we'd have lots of guys that wouldn't want to let her help them. Uh, I'd act like I knew nothing and ask her all the questions. There you go. That's pretty cool. Uh, I actually went into an auto store the other day and I needed them to look up a part to see where it was and uh there was two of them standing there it was the guy and a girl and they were both open and i just automatically went to the girl because i go that guy's probably gonna ask the girl what to do so and then and then turns out that she was training the new guy and so she's like can he do it for you and i said sure and then she had a walking through how to do everything so i was right look at that farm life says out of the 40 eggs i got 24 eggs hatched that's awesome Congratulations. Uh, Joy says, love the jumbo mix eggs I got from you. Gorgeous and mostly friendly birds. They should start laying soon. Can't wait. Love to hear that. Good luck. Uh, Gutro's Family Farm says, Steve, I believe that we both have extensive knowledge to offer, but nine times out of ten, 
if I'm explaining something, they'll turn to Aaron for more info on the literal thing I'm telling them. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I really don't talk that much in front of my wife because I always say the wrong things, which is probably why she never, I don't think she's ever watched any of my YouTube videos or any of my lives because she'd have so many notes that she doesn't want to deal with it because, well, I'm an idiot. But I'm willing to admit that I'm an idiot. So that's why we marry our better half. Uh, Amir says, hi, do you know if you can send the eggs to uh, Colombia? We cannot. No international shipping. I am sorry. Uh, Nabiki says, I have learned the altitude matters. I did well at sea level, but I'm learning how to hatch at over 4,000. Yep, absolutely. Uh, altitude matters a lot. John says, how long do the babies need to stay on the blue towels? Uh, about a week and a half. Ben Garcia says, uh, I had amazing hatch rates, uh, but over 25 died because of lack of air circulation in the brooder. Birds' feathers were getting wet because of the humidity. There you go. Uh, well, you learned. You live and learn. S.O. Swanson says, I get that at work. They demand a supervisor so when the girls don't give them the answer they want. I back up my girls, and because I'm a guy, they'll accept it. Us humans need to do better. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Zach, have you ever hatched peafowl eggs? We have. Uh, a couple different times. Uh, Farm Life says, but unfortunately I couldn't buy from you. Uh, yeah, international shipping. But um, you still did a great job hatching. Uh, I took a guy friend with me when I bought a new car once. The car dealer acted rude to me as expected. It's forever a thing. It's not. It's not going to be forever a thing. It's going to change. Because it has to. It has to. And we just need to call that stupid stuff out. Uh, Tony's in the house. Welcome. Glad you're here. Alex says, will they live, stay up after it's done? Will the live stay up after it's done? Sorry, could not read. Uh, yeah, I'll be posting the live once it's done. Uh, JJ Willow's in the house. Welcome. We're glad you're here. Uh, Tony from Canada. Welcome. Glad you're here. Emma from the UK. A lot of international tonight. Welcome, everybody. Uh, let's see, Ben Garcia says, okay, I will switch back to the other feed tomorrow till 8th week. Yeah, that will give you best results. You really don't want to switch until then. Uh, just because they might start laying now, they're still young, and they still need that, um, that high protein. Uh, Ultra says, do you get any local signage for good prices? Not sure if you do that. Also, should I... Wait. Also, should... Should I not grind the feed smaller for them like you just said? No, you never grind feed. Ever, ever, ever. Yeah, you never grind feed. Grinding feed is bad. Never, never grind feed. Uh, do you get any local signage for good prices? I don't know what that means. I'm sorry. Um, but we do most international, or not international, we do mo most nationally. Uh, so we, we have our little market here locally, uh, but we don't really try to grow that. We just try to maintain it because um, I don't have the eggs to grow. Feather Connection says, back on the hassle customer thing, I've cut people off before for the type of crap. Not often, but some people got to freaking go. Yeah, I mean, and people like that, they don't. Yeah, I agree. And uh, Emma says, 80 people in the chat, please hit the like button for the time Zach is taking away from his beautiful wife for us. It's uh, the least we can do. Thank you very much. I mean, I wasted a lot of your guys' time ranting, so... We'll call it even. Barbara says, do you sell Texas A&M? There is no such thing as Texas A&M, and, and Texas A&M, unfortunately. Uh, that was bred out a long, long, long time ago, like in the 60s. Uh, but we do carry Jumbo Whites, which is probably the same thing you're looking for. Texas A&M was uh, a white quail that the t University of Texas A&M was working on to not make white, but to try to create white meat. All Caternics are, are dark meat. There's no such thing as white meat Caternics. Uh, it did not succeed. They did uh, release their quail to some private customers, um, but through the years that was not maintained, and so there is no such thing as Texas A&M. So if, you're look, if you see someone selling Texas A&M, either you can kindly inform them that that's not a thing and they need to switch their ad, or if they insist that they do, then maybe you should try to find someone else to buy from. Uh, Yusuf is in the house from Massachusetts. Welcome. We're glad you're here. Um, Delaney, Delaney says, do you have geese? Not anymore. We no longer have geese, uh, but we used to. Uh, David says, do you complete 
you can please some of the people all the time, and all the people some of the time, but you cannot please all the people all the time. Agreed. Uh, Ron says, Purina and crumble starter is 30% protein. It has always worked great for me. And fuzzballs grow fast and eat it. Absolutely, that's great. Uh, Julie says, I have chicks that turned two weeks on Friday. I noticed that they were all out from under the brooder plate. I turned it off. Is that okay? Uh, I would turn the brooder plate back on. I would raise it as high as you can raise it uh, and still give them about a week to go under it when they want to. Um, but you want them to have at least the... Uh, possibility of going under it if they need to. Uh, they should be on heat until three weeks old. Uh, Emma says, why is grinding feed bad? I've heard other quail breeders advise this. Uh, I did a video on it, but long story short, all right, so all feed made at a, at a feed mill are pellets. And then they have a very scientific, specific machine that makes them into mini pellets. And then they have a different machine that they run over to make it into a crumble. And then they have a different machine to run it over to make it a mesh. Like these are all very scientific, very expensive, very specific machines that do all of this. The reason why I keep saying scientific specific machines is because this pellet has 30% protein and 6% calcium and blah, blah, blah. Like each one of these pellets are are engineered to have the exact protein, the exact nutrition that they need, right? Well, those other machines that make it into a crumble or a mesh or a mini pellet or whatever allows that crumble to still have the same percentages as what they need. Whereas if you're crumbling the feed in a blender at home, then 40, 50% of that feed is now just going to be sawdust. Like it's just going to be useless. The, the nutrients are not out because they're not managed correctly. Um, so you can feed them all day long, but if they're getting the bad portion of that feed, well then they're not getting any nutrients, any protein, any anything, and then they're going to start dying off, get lethargic, uh, lose weight, you know, take longer to start laying, start getting aggressive because they're not getting the right amount of food uh, or whatever the case may be. So it's much more scientific than that, but that's like the general, like when it's explained to me every time, that's how it goes in my head. So that's how I can explain it to you. Um, if you go to a little cool feed mill, they'll probably be able to explain it a lot better um, than what I just did. But um, yeah, a blender is not gonna scientifically, you know, switch out or, or, or move those crumbles to, you know, cause you could pick that blender up and, and half of it is just going to be crumbled corn and the other will have all this extra protein and stuff. And so the first five quail to go up to it might get the good stuff. And then the rest of the quail, eventually when they get to the feed, they might get all the bad stuff and then, and then it's bad issues. So, uh, that's why <clears throat> hopefully that you understood it. I made it make sense. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, Julie says, thank you. Not a problem. I don't know what I did, but happy to help. Uh, Farm Life says, oh, I grounded my quail food till they were three weeks old. Yeah, going forward, don't do that. You will get much better results. Uh, fantastic explanation. Thank you. JJ Willis says, I have run into quail layer food that had uh, eight to a quarter inch size salt. Do you, do quail eat salt? I've never given my quail salt. I don't know. It's a good question. I mean, you could test it out. I would assume they'd eat it. I don't know if it's good for them, but I'd assume, they, assume they'd eat it. I don't know. I've never given them just salt cubes. Eric says, my quail are six weeks old today, and we got our first egg right on time. Congratulations. You're doing great, and keep it up. Uh, Tub Farm says, great explanation. Thank you very much. False Farm says, Zach, when start wobbling or falling over like they are drunk, what is this? Do they just need minerals, vitamins? Uh, quail start wobbling. Yeah, I got it. Um, it could be uh, giving them, you know, uh, probiotics or, or vitamins could help. Uh, could be an overheating issue. Uh, could be overcrowding issue. It could be that they hit their head. If there's multiple doing it, uh, could be a bad batch of food. I mean, it could be a lot of stuff. Uh, so what I would do uh, would be to give them electrolytes and probi probiotics in their water and feed. Um, and then I'm a big 
believer, and obviously I have multiple bags, but I always use a separate bag and start feeding them right away um, and see if that's the case. Like it could just be a bad bag of feed. Now, not the company that we use now, but the company for the feed that we used uh, years ago, we would get five pallets a month. And there was at least two or three times that out of those five pallets, they were all good except for like three bags and they were moldy and nasty and smelly. Like it happened like two or three times. And so like, you know, it was just a bad bag of food, like something, you know, moisture got in there, water got in there, or it wasn't sealed properly or whatever the case may be, or it's an old bag and they put it with the new batch. I don't know. Uh, but I mean, there, there's a possibility that it's just a bad batch of, of food in that bag uh, is a possibility. Um, that is all the questions tonight, guys. I appreciate everybody showing up. We had amazing hatch rates, so thank you very much for everybody that hashed out and gave me the numbers. I'm loving those. We've got a lot of good videos coming your way. Make sure you check out quailuniversity.com. Uh, make sure you check out Quail Con. Both are available on our website at myshirefarm.com. You can check them both out, learn all about them. Uh, and I cannot wait to start posting all these videos I did for you yesterday. I think it's really going to help, and uh, I wish you all the best. So until next time, ever, oh, I've got a couple more comments, and then we'll get out of here. Uh, let's see. Timber Ridge Quail Farm says we're in Texas, Texas, and it is hot. Temp reads 102, but heat index is much higher. We have our quail in our shop, no AC, but we have fans. Any tips? You don't need any. Uh, I will actually be posting a video this week about is it too hot for quail? Uh, and the answer is, um, well, I'm not going to tell you, but I can tell you, don't worry about it. Watch the video this week, but you'll be completely fine. You're doing a lot of things right. I will give you some more tips in that video, uh, but fans, circulation, uh, make sure that it's three quail per square foot and five hens to every one male, uh, and they'll do just fine. The heat won't, won't hurt them. Uh, but there will be some tips in there to, to make you feel better if you want to do them. Alex says, I can't find quail feed in my area, so I'm giving my quail chicken crumble feed, and in, and I'm blending it, so I'm doing it all wrong, depending on what you said. Um, yeah, I would look for a turkey feed, a turkey starter, um, or a pheasant starter. That would give you a lot better result. Now, blending feed is different than grinding feed. So... If you're blending like chicken and, and turkey feed together or, or something like that, it's not that big of a deal. But again, you don't really know what you're giving them unless you do a lot of math, um, which you can. I am not capable of doing that. Uh, but yeah, if you go for a turkey feed or a pheasant starter, uh, and then they can be on a chicken crumble layer feed. That's not a big deal at all. But when they're growing out until they're eight weeks old, they need to be on a high protein, whether it's a turkey starter or a pheasant starter or something like that. Or even a broiler chicken starter will be fine. But a layer feed, once they're born, you don't want to do. Uh, great program and info. Many thanks from Ron. Thank you very much. Foster Farm says thanks to you. Thank you, Zach. Not a problem. JJ Willow, welcome. Sammy Powell is in the house. Welcome. Uh, so and Terry says, thank you, Zach, for great info and everyone for great conversation. Nikki James says, good night all. Have a great week. Hope to see you all at QuailCon. Nubiki says, good night, and it was good to be here after a long absence. Welcome back. Uh, Nisha Rama here in Phoenix. Mine are doing good. Awesome. Uh, we have three-digit temps. I believe it in Phoenix. Uh, Quail Corner Homestead says, game bird feed starter and regular game bird will work. There you go. And uh, that is all the comments for tonight. So until next week, we will uh, we'll be back next Sunday for a live Q&A. But I've got a lot of videos coming out this week. So stay tuned. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the like button before you leave. And as always, everybody, 